This tutorial is sponsored by the 3D Coloring Book, a project specifically designed to help empower artists who are struggling with texturing in Substance Painter and to help show you that anyone can create beautiful pieces of art with just a little bit of practice and guidance. To instantly gain access to hundreds of pre-made professional level models and hours of high quality tutorials, click the link in the description and begin your journey today. Hello, my name is Jess and I'm a 3D artist. In this video, I'd like to go over the process of making this fantasy scroll asset. So I'll be showing you some of the modeling, sculpting and texturing techniques I use when creating a stylized asset like this one. For this project, I use Blender for modeling, ZBrush for sculpting and Substance Painter for texturing. This concept by Flick Steven inspired me to create the 3D asset. Um, it's not a one-to-one -one representation, but I thought I could take what this artist initially created and make something cool out of that. So to start off, I blocked out my model into three main parts, the buckle part, the strap part, and the paper part. The geometry on the buckle part and the strap part is mostly straightforward. I got some reference for the skull just to get a good representation of the skull and just have some geometry to use in ZBrush. The geometry on the paper part is a little more complicated and I'll show you how I created that in the next part. So to start off the paper geometry, I created a plane, uh, deleted three of the verts, moved the remaining vert to the center, and then just started to extrude outwards and create the shape of the scroll. So we just take it around, uh, creating uh, the shape of the scroll and being mindful of how the points might connect if we were to put geometry between those verts. So we're just going around, maybe give it like a little lip like that. And the next thing I did was just extrude it out again to the length of the scroll. And then you just start putting edge loops in to start refining that shape. Uh, maybe start flaring out the edges, uh, just getting that stylized uh, sort of um, shape language, squish it a bit maybe. And yeah, we have something like that then. So next I use the solidify modifier uh, to just increase the thickness of the paper. And you'll see once you apply that modifier, it will generate geometry for you. So I just put a subdivision surface on it again. Uh, just to get it smooth out. And then what we can do is start using the soft select tool just to get some of that extra character and some more of those stylized proportions in the scroll. So in ZBrush, I use the group polygroups by normal, uh, function to group the geometry, um, based on the directions of the normal. And this allows you to Increase the geometry so that when you um, subdivide it, it doesn't deform too much. I did a quick Z remesh on it uh, just to get some even topology to work on. So then what I like to do is use the polish tool in the deformation tab just to give my model a nice polished edge. And once you've done that, just remember to uncrease all just to remove the creases from your um, geometry before you start sculpting. So once I start sculpting, I grab my trim dynamic brush and just start chipping away at the metal, um, keeping sort of a stylized faceted look on the sculpt, keeping it nice and bold as well. Um, your main geometry or your overall geometry is big and bold. So you wanna keep, uh, that style consistent in your secondary details as well. 
So to start creating some stylized surface noise on my model, I use these pop marks. And you can do anything really. I just decided to go with this. Uh, the main point is to keep your details localized and not really distribute detail over your entire model. Um, you want to have points of interest and sort of keep it consistent with the shapes that you've already established by keeping it nice and bold and just having them in sort of more localized areas. So after a while, I got to this. It's the mostly final sculpt. And you can see I've incorporated my pockmarks and just kept them in localized clusters, um, not distributing too much detail over the entire sculpt. Regarding the rest of the sculpt, um, I would recommend using some reference when doing something anatomical like a skull. Uh, it just helps you get a better representation of the skull and it's important even if you're doing stylized art. So here's my low poly model. I've kept things mostly quads where possible and I've marked my shops where they're supposed to be. Um, this is important so that your normals display correctly on your mesh in the game engine. And I've decided to cap the ends just to save UV space because I wasn't planning to open up the scroll for animation or anything like that. I've kept the poly count relatively low. Uh, it comes in at around 2,200 tries. Um, not low to the point that it starts to affect the silhouette of the mesh in an undesirable way. So next I unwrap my model. I uh, just wanted to give you a tip on creating uh, efficient UVs. Um, so yeah, when you have sort of uh, round uh, parts of a mesh and you unwrap them, you want to straighten out those UVs just so that you can pack them in a more efficient way to maximize your texture resolution. So just for normal baking, I separated uh, parts of my geometry that connect at hard edges onto different UV tiles. This just allows you to bake normals that bend around harsh edges in a more correct way. So here in Substance Painter, I'll just give you a quick breakdown of the texture workflow. It's a metalness roughness workflow. So I started with a base layer, a base color layer, and then I added AO layers. Um, I like to make my AO uh, dark purple or dark blue, and I added another one just for some color variation. And then we get to the highlight layers, um, which I drive through the curvature map. And I have like a two-tone highlight. The under and the one underneath has a bit of a blur, just to bring out that secondary color. After that, I add a 3D distance layer, which just basically uses the position map to give a slight color variation with a gradient over your over your texture. And then I painted in some ambient glow uh, that the gems would create. Um, onto the metal and roughness part, I made a custom roughness map just to bring out the edges a bit more and make them more sort of shiny than the interior of the metal. The change in roughness from the edges to the interior of the texture kind of adds to the stylized look of the edge highlights. On the paper, it's pretty much the same uh, over there with this element. I was just playing around with, you know, additional things I could add, but I decided to remove it in the end. So ignore that. Um, so yeah, the paper is essentially the same. Um, I just uh, went with a base color, uh, some grunge to get some color variation and then basically constructed my AOs in the same way. Uh, different colors, um, you know, for different areas, darker at the center and a more green sort of glow at the ends. Um, the edges are basically the same um, as the metals, but I just adjusted the roughness. I also created a custom 
art map uh, to just give the paper some more texture. The paper was a bit of a challenge. I tried to sort of get a subsurf effect by, you know, lightening it towards the edges and just playing around with emissive properties and generally just trying to make it look like there is an underglow um, under the paper generated by the runes. So I added the runes as well. I played around with the emissive properties and the roughness to get the effect that I have there. One thing I didn't mention was um, these glows that I created. Uh, I just uh, extruded some more geometry out of the side of the scroll, added a base color to that with a gradient opacity map. And that sort of generates the fall off that you get over there. Another thing I didn't mention was the writing on the paper. I just thought that um, it needed something else to draw the eye to the focal point of the skull. So I just loaded uh, my diffuse texture into Photoshop and uh, painted those on. I just wanted to mention as well that this texture workflow is based on a tutorial by Fanny Byrne, which she does a lot of even more awesome stuff with her tutorial, so I'd recommend checking that out as well. Here's the final asset in Sketchfab. I enjoy using Sketchfab to present my models. Um, I think it just gives it a nice interactive uh, element to present in your work. And also, I think it emulates what uh, your asset might look like in a game engine quite well. Thank you for watching this tutorial slash breakdown. And thank you to Starlight Station for giving me the opportunity to present my work and process. Thanks, cheers.